I'm Ben Gordon Sniffin. And I'm Ethan Cooper. And welcome to The Transcript. This week, The Transcript goes to the Bridge Street School Science Fair to learn about STEM education in elementary schools, it takes a trip to the Western Mass News headquarters, and Hamped Up talks to the Northampton High School baseball team about their upcoming season. Republicans say they still plan to put the American Health Care Act up for a vote Thursday, even as the White House continue to work to whip up enough votes to ensure passage. London police on Thursday named 52-year-old Khalid Massoud as the man responsible for the deadly attacks Wednesday on the Westminster Bridge and outside Parliament. Massoud was British-born and known to authorities, but he was not the subject of any active investigations. U.S. officials told CNN Wednesday that the FBI is reviewing information that counterintelligence investigators believe may show coordination between associates of President Trump and Russian operatives who potentially released information to hurt Hillary Clinton's presidential campaign. Agents are sifting through human intelligence, travel, business, and phone records, and accounts of in-person meetings, CNN reports. So, Emmett, what did we do last weekend? Last weekend, Luke, we went to the Bridge Street Science Fair, oh. and uh, we were looking to learn from the masterminds of, of Bridge Street about, like, some, some science some to do. Some science stuff. Uh, so we did that. We did that. We went to Bridge Street School, mm -hmm. uh, and we had a grand old time. Uh, Emmett, what, what were some of the projects that we saw there? So we got we got Griffin here, right? right. He loves rocks. He's Griffin's got a, really into rocks. He's That's really into rocks. He has a natural passion for rocks. Right. I appreciate uh, all the dedication you put in this. Section. This is the mineral section. Right. Okay. And rocks and minerals are two separate things, right? Rocks are made out of crystals and minerals. Oh, okay. I see. Now, what kind of what kind of rocks are these? These are very interesting. Oh, geo. I got them at a rock fair. Oh, that's very cool. And how all of these rocks? How did you collect them? I have a lot of rocks in my backyard, so usually I just randomly bring rocks in. So you have a natural passion for rocks. Yes. They're in my the the right next to my driveway. Look, that's a fossil. Second off, we got a. Uh, we got some multitasking. Yeah, multitasking. Got Luke here some, watching his favorite TV shows. Did some uh, math problems while watching Barbie, my favorite thing to do. I love math. I love Barbie. Mm -hmm. To be able to do them at the same time was just a pleasure and a luxury. A dream come true for you. Yeah, dream come true. Ten people effectively multitask. All right. So, do you think we could sort of jump in and ask this activity? Like, what what is it? What are the rules? You know, how do you do it? Well, um, you have to. Do like do a sheet of math problems while watching a TV show, and then you have to do another sheet of math problems without watching the TV show. So you your hypothesis was that people couldn't uh, multitask as well as they could just focus on one thing and and do it do it well. Okay. So do you think we could we could try to do your your activity here, sure. and uh, so is uh, these are these are your uh, these are your math sheets. And I assume that this is for uh, watching the TV show? Yeah. Okay. Scientific purposes only, Luke. Yeah, scientific purposes only. I think, I think this one's got your name all over it, Luke. Oh, boy. Do I love Barbie. All right, so it looks like I got one more answer right than I did while I was watching Barbie. So it looks like your guys' experiment worked perfectly. One thing we did yes. was we looked at a survival bear. Exactly. And a survival bear, for those who don't know, is a bear, a, a teddy bear basically, designed for survival situations. So you bring this teddy bear out into the, the disaster world with you mm -hmm. and you can survive with ease. Our invention is a stuffed animal bear that has survival equipment and tools attached for any kind of catastrophe. We have made it possible for our kids to be prepared for any emergency by creating something that they will be attracted to and want to carry around. I am I mean, blown away at how prepared I would be carrying this bear around in any disastrous situation. I can't tell you how many situations I wish I had that bear. Right, me too. I could yeah. have saved my life countless times. Yeah, but unfortunately neither of us had that had that privilege, so no, no. we looked at some electricity. Yes, we did. We looked at electricity. We had potatoes, potatoes, lemons, lemons. We got batteries. We got batteries. All of them powering LED light bulbs, yeah. but like for, for separate amounts of time. So we tried to 
use potatoes, lemons, and bad berries to power an LED light bulb. And it turns out that they all do, but in a certain amount, like they last in like a certain amount of time. As you can see, the lemons lasted 9 hours, 30 minutes. The potatoes lasted 10 hours, 11 minutes. And the batteries are still going. In 16 days. How many potatoes would it take for me to power my house, do you think? Uh, Probably 2,000. You know, you, you got to wonder why people are still using fossil fuels when you can just use potatoes exactly. or maybe lemons. Yeah. I mean, it, it would only take 2,000 potatoes for me to power my house. So. Exactly. So I, why not just go for it? It's way less that. expensive than a, exactly. a large hadron collider particle I don't cannon. I know what that is. Me neither. <laughs> anyway, we're scientists. Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Last week, the transcript traveled to Springfield, where I interviewed meteorologist Jacob Wyckoff about working for Western Mass News. Uh, my name is Jacob Wyckoff. I'm a meteorologist at Western Mass News. I started here uh, back in June of 2015, and I became full-time in November 2015. So I've seen the station grow, and uh, I love doing the weather. And now they're kind of expanding my role. You just saw me host the 1230 show doing some step dancing on St. Patrick's Day. So. Yeah. So I'm curious, this is uh, kind of a small building, but you have ABC, CBS, and Fox yeah. all working in the same building. What is that work environment like? Well, it's a beautiful work environment. We've merged two different stations uh, back in 2015, April. Uh, Meredith Corporation purchased ABC and Fox, and they moved CBS, which used to be downtown, up to here to the, our Liberty Street studio. And it's been a very flawless transition. Uh, we are seen on Fox, CBS, ABC, as you mentioned, and really there's no um, issues whatsoever. We can use video from our CBS uh, corporate um, side of things, CBS News and ABC News. Um, it's just two different, we're, we're seen on all of those stations, so it's, it's very seamless though. Uh, you wouldn't know, oh, they're only on ABC or they're only on CBS, we're seen on all of them. And finally, I'm just kind of curious, as a local news station, how do you balance covering national and local news? What we like to do is we try to national, we t try to take those national stories and bring them to a local level. So recently, there have been threats uh, for Jewish centers uh, across the country, even here in West Springfield, there had been some. So we try to bring those national stories that are garnering attention, whether it's uh, police brutality, and bring them back home. Uh, immigration, obviously a hot-button issue, and we try, try to find someone or something that can help tell the story here in our backyards. Because ultimately you can see stories that are happening at a national level, level, but unless you're connecting to it locally, oh that's happening to my neighbor, or that's happening to this city down the street, sometimes you don't have that appreciation for what's happening. So we, we do try to take those stories and, and make it hit home a little bit more. All right, great. Thanks for talking to us. Of and course. For Hi, I'm Connor McClendon. Welcome to Hamped Up. Y'all ready for this? Hi, I'm Connor McClendon, and welcome to Hamped Up. This week, I talked to Bo Garbarini and Andy Gregor Savage about the upcoming baseball season and last year's space worm controversy with West Springfield. So last year, you made it to the first round of the playoffs. You ultimately lost to West Springfield. What do you think the team needs to do this year to make a deeper run in the playoffs? I think we need a, a stronger, I guess, pitching rotation. We need to be more consistent with that. Um, and I think we just need another strong defense again. So last year, you obviously had a very strong senior class, and, a lot of the, and all those seniors are gone this year. So who do you think some of the younger guys are that need to step up? Uh, younger guys, probably... Kids like Devontae, if he makes varsity, Aiden Chapdelaine, Devin Kellogg for sure. He's been a key player since, for us since uh, his freshman year. Kids like Andy, Andy did, needs to step up. And uh, I think a lot of the returning seniors who maybe didn't play a lot last year need to step up because uh, we did lose a lot of seniors, and that's going to be crucial this year for sure. So Westside was a team you beat twice last season, but ultimately that was the team that bumped you from the playoffs. So would you consider them to be your rival? Yeah, no, I, we had, last year we had a lot of beef with Westside. There was uh, this thing, 
when people throw a pitch like in the dirt, you say, "Oh, leave it with the worms." And then last year in West Side, someone threw a high pitch, and then I was like, "Oh, space worms!" Like ah, space because it's high. And then um, yeah, so they took that from us, I guess. And then they, since they won states, eventually they get interviewed by uh, Mass Live. And they said that they invented space worms because by the end of the year it was like a whole league thing, like everyone was saying it. And then so that kind of got us all riled up. And yeah, there was a lot of like Instagram beef and stuff like that. So I think West Side is definitely a rival. And finally, what are some of your personal goals for the season? Personal goals would be, I guess, make it to playoffs and um, hopefully get a Western Mass title. Personal goals. Um, make the playoffs, get a Western Mass title, and really just enjoy the last season playing baseball with the kids I've played baseball with forever. So, yeah. Great. Thank you so much for being on Hamped Up. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to stop by the Young Democrats Club on Wednesday at 2 in Miss Fontaine's room and like the club's Facebook page.